Shalom, everyone. My name is Tony Pino, and today I'd like to give you a few pointers and tips on how to interpret Romans chapter 3, verse 31. We know that the book of Romans was written in a time when there was much controversy rising between the Jew and the Gentile on where Israel's place was in the new covenant, because they weren't walking faithfully as a nation. So everything leading up to chapters 9 through 11 is Paul showing that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of Yahweh and that Israel is still Yah's covenant people. And we definitely see that in Romans chapter 11, where he lets everyone know that the gifts and calling are irrevocable to who Israel. So what we are seeing is problems in uh, the assemblies here in Rome, uh, largely due to the fact that recently the Jews have come back to the assemblies there because they had been removed for over five years by Caesar Claudius. And now they have been allowed to come back and many controversies have arisen between the Gentile and the Jew within the congregation. So Paul is taking the time to straighten out the arguments. So in Romans chapter 3, verse 31, he states, do we then nullify the law through faithfulness, through faithfulness in Yeshua? May it never be. On the contrary, we uphold the law. Now, the law is the wedding covenant. It is the law of Moshe spoken of in the context here. Everyone would have known in this era when you say law, you're speaking of the covenant relationship that Israel has with Yahweh and the birthing of the nation and the kingdom that happened at Sinai. This is the wedding covenant. So does your faithfulness in Yeshua nullify the law? It does not. It establishes it. And uh, this is very vital because we know that he is also just supporting Jeremiah 31, verses 30 through 34, where it states that the new covenant will be made with Israel. Amen. Not something called the church. The body of Messiah is directly connected to the covenants with Israel. It is within the covenants, within the promises to Israel, the nation of Israel, not outside of it. And uh, so then it also goes on to say in Jeremiah 31, verses 30 through 34, that the Torah, the law will be written on your hearts. All right. This is a supernatural act. So does our faithfulness in Yeshua nullify the Torah? No, we will begin to walk in it correctly, filled with the spirit. We'll begin to learn how to do it. It's a process. And that is what Paul is also trying to share and teach here. You do not nullify the Torah with your faithfulness in Yeshua. You now make him not just savior, but Lord and King. You're in a kingdom now, and these are the laws of the kingdom. And so we begin to learn how to obey them correctly. Israel wasn't obeying them correctly in the first century. So, but by the power of the Holy Spirit now, they can begin to walk in the Torah correctly with their faithfulness put in Yeshua. He is their Lord, Master, and King. Amen. So let's go ahead real quickly. I want to go up to verse one and uh, quickly walk through this with you. Uh, we'll just touch on some verses here and you'll see the point that I'm trying to make. All right. So Romans chapter one, I'm sorry, Romans chapter three, verse one, Paul states, what then is the advantage of being Jewish or what is the benefit of circumcision much in every way? First of all, they were entrusted with the sayings of God, all right? The oracles of God, the covenants were given to them. They were to be a light to all nations. They were not to hoard it to themselves, but they were to welcome the Gentile in to be part of the covenant. They were to show them the goodness of Yahweh, the goodness of the laws and uh, the uh, relationship that they have with Yahweh. Just read Deuteronomy chapter four. People were supposed to be in awe of the goodness of Yah when they walked correctly in them. They were responsible for being a light to the nations, but they did not walk in faithfulness. So it says here, so what if some did not trust? Will their lack of faith nullify God's faithfulness? May it never be. All right? Let God be true, even if every man is a liar. Now, Paul is going to go on to say how both the Jew and Gentile have fallen short. All have sinned. It's all about Yah's faithfulness to his covenants. Amen. And that covenant relationship with Israel is key. Now, if we go down here to Romans chapter 3, verse 19 and start here, if this will help us even more. Paul states, now we know that whatever the Torah, the law says, it says to those within the law. All right. Now, when you see this law of Moshe, this law here, Torah, it's talking about a covenant, those within the covenant. Okay. So now we know 
that whatever the law says, right, the covenant to Israel, it says to those within the Torah, within the law, those who have that covenant relationship, mainly speaking of the nation of Israel here, so that every mouth may be shut and the whole world may become accountable to God. I mean, they were supposed to spread the good news of Yahweh. These laws given at Sinai were the laws of the kingdom. They were to be spread to all the nations. This would help shut the mouths of everyone because they would now know that they are sinning. They are sinning according to the ways of Yahweh. So verse 20, for no human on the basis of Torah observance will be set right in his eyes. Now, just the fact that you obey Torah, if you eliminate the work of Yeshua and just trust in your Torah observance, no, you cannot be made right. You must put your faith and trust in Yeshua, and then your faithfulness to him will include keeping the Torah. That is the measuring stick to show you where your faithfulness is. Are you being faithful to Yeshua or not? Are you in the kingdom or not? It determines your faithfulness. Where It's, it's like the fruit of your faithfulness to Yeshua. Amen. And you are filled with the spirit. You are to walk in obedience. And the main thing you need to know and understand is repentance is part of faithfulness. Nobody expects you to walk sinlessly in the Torah, but you are to walk in repentance. That's been always given there, even at Sinai. That's the biggest part of Torah observance is walking in repentance. They did not do it correctly. We have Yeshua now, and we have the power and the anointing to do so if we were to choose to do that. So as we move down here to verse 27, it says, where then is boasting? Is it excluded by what principle of works? No, but by the principle of faith. For we consider a person to be set right apart from law observance, Torah observance, because they're leaving the equation of Yeshua out, right? They're leaving the equation of Yeshua out. Is is God the God of the Jewish people only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Since God is one, he will set right the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised by faith. So entrance into the kingdom is by faith in what? In Yeshua. It was by faith in following Moshe out of uh, Egypt, wasn't it? Both Jew and Gentile left Egypt and came to Sinai and became the kingdom of Israel. They left by faith. It's always been available to both Jew and Gentile. It's always by faith. But then does that faith nullify the Torah in your life? It does not. Okay, so verse 30 again. Since God is one, he will set right the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised by faith. Do we then nullify the law through faithfulness? May it never be. On the contrary, we uphold the law. We uphold the Torah. So your faith in Messiah Yeshua will now cause you to what? Want to follow the king, want to love the king. And in doing so, the fruit of that is you will follow the law. It does not nullify. It tells you when you sin. It tells you when you need to repent. It is walking a life of repentance, a, law, a life of turning and walking in obedience to the king. That is all part of your salvation. Amen. You enter into the kingdom by grace, by the gift of Yeshua. And that gift includes you making him king. So, yes. Following the Torah is established in your life because it shows the fruit of your faith. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed this time, and I hope this helps to clear things up. So until we meet again, everyone, shalom.